Hi, this is going to be a video concerning what some of the, one of the tactics that organized gang stalking expeditions engage in, organized stalking or gang stalking, which you can Google. <clears throat> what they'll do, they, uh, these expeditions are engaged in what is known as crafted seating arrangements, where they will uh, intentionally and deliberately get around a target, uh, whether it be on a bus, a trolley, a restaurant, a movie theater, um, a library whether it be a university library uh, or a regular public library. And once they ascertain where a target, where a target is at, uh, in, uh, in reference to these descriptions, what they'll do is intentionally, with complete malice of forethought and criminal intent, is place the people that they have decided to use for that day to engage in organized gang stalking sensitization methods. And this is done to uh, form an association in a target's mind once these individuals sit behind, next to, or in front of, or sometimes all three, and had these uh, individuals engage in the sensitization methods that the target has been sensitized to, which means specific types of physical gestures, specific ways of coughing or clearing your throat, words or phrases, okay? The words and phrases are what is known as the direct conversation tactics, the physical gestures are called anchored, anchored physical gestures, and the uh, sensitization when it comes to particular sounds like specific ways of coughing or clearing your throat, and um, what they'll do is make sure that the target notices them because they already know, the manager of these expeditions already knows the target's been sensitized to them because he is the one or she is the one who has made sure that the target has become sensitized to them. And as a result of these sensitization methods being repeated around a target everywhere a target goes, uh, the target becomes, um, the sensitization becomes associated to the harassment, okay, and to the stalking because they got to know where you're at in order to get around the target to do it. So what they'll do is use the target, say if I go to the laundromat, I, I, I go to do my laundry at least once every four weeks, okay, because I have enough clothes to get me through the week. And uh, so what they'll do is they'll engage in, um, they'll have the individuals that they'll use for a day. Uh, hang on one second. Cooking my lunch. And what they'll do is uh, uh, get to know a target's routines and habits. And uh, as a result, also through the physical surveillance, um, they'll ascertain where a target's at. So they, if they have surveilled me and stalked me to a laundromat, especially since they know I've done my laundry there on repeated occasions, what they'll do is bring an individual in the laundromat to engage in these sensitization methods for me to see. Okay? And what they'll do is you better da be damn sure that these people will deny that what they're doing is intentionally. What they'll do is call the target crazy if an incident transpires as a result of what they might do, how they might try and provoke a target to act out as a result of the target experiencing the sensitization methods, even even going to the laundromat. Okay. The goal for them is to bring a person around them at all times, any, any amount of per, uh, people, anywhere between 1 to 3 to 5 to 7 to even 10 people in one environment, and they'll rotate them as well uh, to uh, make sure that the target sees the sensitization methods uh, either being heard, the direct conversation tactics, or seen, the visual gestures. Okay, and this is done to uh, uh, make sure that a target knows that these people have been purposely put there to engage in these methods, and as a result, a target feels harassed and stalked because, again, they got to know where you're at to do it. And so, what they'll do is they'll, um, case in point, recently I was at a library that uh, has to do with uh, uh, research and law, and I believe they had this. I, I don't normally use this language, but I'm going to go ahead with this one because the way this girl acted and the criminal intent concerning what she was purposely doing, I have a right to call her a skank, okay? So what they had the skank do was sit right next to me and engage in non-stop movements because part of the expedition is to overload the senses of a target. That's why they use the direct conversation methods, uh, your hearing, and the physical gestures, your seeing. Those two things are part of our, four, our of our five senses, okay? And what they try to do is overload our senses, tactile, okay? And um, uh, so what they did was they had this girl come in and sit right next to me and have her constantly be moving, 
I scratching her, scratching her face, scratching her head, scratching her leg right by, you know, the leg that was closest to me, moving her hand up and down from my peripheral vision in order to distract me so I would notice her in reference to, she'd move her hand like this, just going back and forth, not doing nothing with it at all, just moving it back and forth for my peripheral vision to see it. So I would look, or at least look with my peripheral vision, so I could see her putting her hands to her face like this. Go to YouTube and type in, Learning Disabled Woman Catches Gang Stalkers Admitting Sent to Harass. Three teenagers were caught uh, admitting that they were put on a bus route I was already on to engage in these specific visual gestures, physical gestures for me to see. Uh, uh, and, and how the fact that I was already exposing how I was experiencing that along all my routes two months before. And how there's videos already online two, two and three months before I caught those three teenagers admitting they were put on a bus route I was already on to engage in these behaviors. So basically, uh, I, I thought to myself, I'm going to get up to go have a cigarette. And I started uh, disconnecting everything that I had attached to the computer, my USB drive, uh, the earphones that I was using. And then putting them in my duffel bag in order to carry the duffel bag out with me. So what she did was, once I started uh, taking all these uh, things out of the uh, computer... She moved back in her chair, which would have obstructed my way to get out, okay? So I asked her kindly if she would please move her chair. I went out and had a cigarette and came back in. She had moved it back again. And so I tried to squeeze through, and I didn't have enough room to squeeze through, and so I accidentally bumped her. And um, so then she started yelling and making a scene, okay? So what we have to understand here is that is that... What they want to do is let me know this girl has been put there purposely. And then she tries to create an incident and blame it on me as a result of me bumping her chair. It's the reason why she moved her chair back to begin with. Yes, and there's a video camera right on the ceiling, not even four feet away. Yes, right in the exact aisle that covers where we were sitting. This was done in order to try and provoke a reaction out of me so they could get it on video for one, and for two, so they could possibly try and ban me from the library. And this is how they operate. It's called crafting seating arrangements, where they first want to make sure that the target notices that the person sitting next to them, across from them, behind them, or all three have been put there deliberately for a target to see the sensitization methods. And then they'll try and attempt something to a provoke a target by accusing them of purposely bumping their chair, by uh, trying to provoke them to act out as a result of once the target, me, mumps the chair, they'll try and say, why don't you watch where you're going? And then trying to solicit a response back out of me because I already know that that person has been engaging in gang stalking towards me. Okay? So basically what they're trying to do is provoke you through letting you know that they're, they're there purposely to harass you overtly and then will deny the whole thing and then try and create you to act out some way by being direct to you as a result of something they do to try and get you to do something so that you can they can then turn around and say, uh, why are you bumping my chair? Yeah, why are you bumping my chair? What's the matter with you? Yeah, this is how they act, okay? The girl pushes her chair back into the aisle. I accidentally bump into it, and then she accuses me of doing it on purpose or whatever. And this is literally how they operate. So a scene can be provoked, and so the video camera can see it. I believe what they're trying to do is, is, is an attempt to either try and call me uh, that I have tendencies to be violent or that I seem to be a troublemaker because I'm being banned from all these libraries I'm going to. Because I'm being gang stalked to all these libraries I go to. Yes. And because I'm exposing it online concerning it. You better believe that these libraries, these public libraries and university libraries, are going to protect themselves from premise liability and criminal intent. And they do this by blaming the target on behaviors that are that they try and paint are totally inappropriate. When it's the target who is the target is the one who is the victim of these crimes and they're not doing nothing but using these schemes and maneuvers so they can get video pictures, okay? Yeah, of the target responding to provocations. Yes. You know, my name is Leslie Williams. When you go in, all you gotta do is go to Google. Go to Google and type in gang stalking in libraries. And then in a separate search, type in gang stalking and, and universities. And when you witness how many Google generated responses you get, yes, to each description, and then, and then uh, meticulously research the blocks that come up, you'll clearly be able to see that I am telling you the truth. And then Google crafted seating arrangements when it comes to gang stalking. How they, it's called boxing a target in, so they have to witness the harassment that's overtly being done towards them. And then if an incident comes about and the police are called, or the security gets involved, or both, 
the police will say, what's going on? The target will say, well, I'm being gang stalked and this person was harassing me. They'll, for one, they'll act like they don't know what gang stalking is so they can look up on the internet, find your videos concerning you exposing it, and then call you crazy. Yes, because these incidences are designed to bring about a provocation so the police or security can be called, or at least so the target can be banned from these university libraries or public libraries. Because it's at these libraries where the target's using internet services to expose the crimes that are involved in. Do you see what I'm saying? So the only thing they're doing is crafting this harassment, hoping to provoke a target to act out, blame the target on the incident. Yeah. And then what? you know what they'll do also? They'll use a person, like, you know how I told you I'd go to the laundromat and through the surveillance and, you know, I went there? They'll use a person on one day to engage in these behaviors. Then they'll use the same person on a next day, two or three months later, to be on the bus. And then on that day, that person won't do nothing at all when it comes to sensitization methods. Hoping.